Hey, welcome back everyone to Veteran Nation. And as always, go to www.nrnplus.com slash Veteran Nation. That's our landing page for the uh, for the show. You can go on there, you can support the show, you can subscribe to the network. There's a bunch of independent content creators here at the network who they just do a lot of great things. You can not only get all of my shows, you'll get all of theirs as well. So it's a really good deal for uh, uh, $9.99 or yeah, $9.99 for the month or $7. 995 for the year. Um, we also now have a YouTube page. So you can go to the YouTube page. Uh, we're just Veteran Nation on YouTube. You go there, you can like, you can subscribe, you'll get access. That's where we're going to start archiving all the videos as well publicly. So you can go in there, watch any of my videos and uh, see what, all the things that we're talking about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started with today's show. Now, if you're part of my Facebook group. Uh, if you're in Facebook, you can go to Veteran Nation on Facebook. That's our group. We have a good discussion there. Uh, for some reason, people are not uh, answering the questions. When you join, there's there's questions about the rules. Make sure you answer those questions so that I can uh, add you in and allow you to be a part of the discussion. Um, but in the group, uh, we've been talking, and I do something I call coffee with the skipper. That's where I'm, I'll be sitting here at my home and I'll just be having coffee and I'll just very briefly talk about an issue. And I did one yesterday. I am doing this one kind of in that format because it's normally just me sitting right here in my living room, just having my coffee and talking about what's going on. What happened yesterday is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller, uh, who was the Marine who famously did a video where he criticized the uh, very upper echelons of the military for pulling out of Afghanistan without uh, really having a plan to do so. And, um, you know, he was a commander. He, he was down at SOI, which is the School of Infantry uh, in um, uh, Camp Lejeune. He was removed from his command. He was a congressionally screened commander. They removed him for it. That's perfectly fine. He knew that was coming. He then uh, resigned his commission, was willing to forego even his retirement, which he's fully capable of earning. Um, if you're going to have a disagreement with the military and you're going to take up that grievance however you know you see fit you should be prepared to go ahead and uh you know walk away from the rest of your career and that's what he was willing to do so while you know most of you may not agree with what he did when you believe that passionately you should be willing to be a man of principle and say you know what i'm not going to take any more of the military's money. I'm not going to take the benefits. I'm just going to walk right away from the military because I feel so passionately about that. That's what he was, that's what he was doing. And um, they put him in the brig. And I will tell you this, this is based on what I know of the military and I know of what I know of how they do things. I don't think that him being put in the brig came directly from the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Berger. I, I can guarantee that. That came from the top. Um, I don't think, because they're talking about doing a court-martial. Hello, Glory. Glory doesn't always like to, to pop on screen, but every once in a while she does. She's my service dog. She uh, she knows when I start talking passionately about things. Um, she will come over and try to give me comfort because she thinks I'm, I'm anxious. And I'm not. I'm doing good. But you're a good girl. Uh, so that came from the top down. I guarantee you General Berger, you know, did that. And here's what I find very interesting. You know, there, we've had many cases of military members, uh, going on to social media. In fact, we've, we've done stories here where the Navy was going to crack down on it. That was a year ago. They were going to do all these new things. Good luck. Best I can say to you, good luck. Um, but we, in fact, we had a master gunnery sergeant who was making videos, uh, making political videos talking about women. And you didn't see him removed from his position. You didn't see him thrown into the brig. Now, you know, Lieutenant Colonel Scheller, whether you, whether you agree with him or not, he did things the right way. He was willing to say, hey, this is what I believe. I don't believe it's right. Uh, I'm going to say it publicly because as a senior officer, I have to look out for the people below me. And I believe that this 
this affects them negatively and I'm willing to throw away my career to do it. And you know, that's a very brave thing to do. And, you know, the military should have just said, okay, yeah, he's going to take a political stance, let him go. They're not doing that. They are now, they've thrown him in the brig. They've, they've questioned his mental sanity. And let me just pull a parallel for you. Do you know what country used to do this very same thing? Grab their military officers when they didn't, when the, it was clear that they politically weren't towing a line and they would put them into a uh, confinement and say that they were mentally disturbed. And that was uh, the Soviet Union. That, I don't think anyone will agree that that was a healthy thing in any way. And this kind of shows you, you know, the political mindset. You can't, as in the case of that master gunny who was speaking out earlier this year, and now him, if you're going to do, if you're going to hold someone accountable for political speech that goes against, um, you know, leadership, you should hold the other one accountable. This is the problem of the military. They're going to hold, they're going to say, no, this guy needs to be put an example. This guy is not. Um, now I will say this, this is finally a case where they're taking a, a senior officer and putting them into uh, confinement. But I can tell you, we've had we've had colonels who've been accused of pedophilia in the military who have not been treated this way. They've been, well, we can't prove it, you know, and they've been given as much leeway as I've seen anyone given. This is this is the problem within the military. And I, when I was with the uh, two uh, congressmen last week, I spoke to them about it this is going to cause the military system to crumble. You have to treat people politically the same. And when, if, when you don't have, when you don't have that, uh, what am I trying to say? That, um, that same level of equality, it's going to be a problem. And we've seen this in the past in the military and other organizations, and we're going to, it's just going to keep happening. So, that's one thing I am very concerned about with the military. And I, I you know, I've served under General Berger. Um, I'll just tell you, I'm not impressed. I saw him look the other way on senior officer misconduct in the past. Uh, I am not shocked at all that he's looking the other way this time. Um, in fact, uh, that's pretty much how you get to be a general nowadays is to look the other way. There's a very bad word in the military. And, and I say bad word because me as a, me as a very junior officer, you know, there was a time where we trained our officers to be, to hold a certain standard. And the word is liability. The lawyers have gotten into the military. And the, the problem with that is when you're given a commission, you are not told, hey, you have to follow the rules and uphold the rules when it's when you could be liable. No, you hold the rules, you follow the rules all the time. That is what we should expect. Uh, sun, sorry, the sun's starting to come in here, so I'm going to move a little bit. Um, so that's that's the whole thing about that. We want our military leaders to be principled people, you know, very principled. You want them to be solid that if push comes to shove, I know I can follow this guy, you know, follow this guy into anything. And when you get this wishy-washy, oh, we're going to hold this guy accountable, but we're not going to hold this one because we can't be, we can't hold, we, we could be hold, held liable. That's the wrong thing. And I got to talk to the congressman and I asked him, you know, I, in 2013, General Amos, who was notoriously not liked, he was not liked as the commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, either on the military side and on the veteran side. He did a couple things. And the one thing that was very impressive is he went and he spoke to every single Marine in the Marine Corps. He went all around the globe, talked to every single one. And I, I explained this to the congressman. And I said, you know, there's things that he was talking about. He was talking about hazing. He was talking about uh, 
senior officer misconduct. He was talking about uh, uh, military sexual trauma and sexual assaults. He was talking about uh, sexual harassment. And he, you know, he was talking about these things. They have not gotten better. They have gotten worse. And I asked the congressman, what are you going to do about it? And he said, this is absolutely a congressional problem. We need to address it congressionally. I, you know, he's not on any of the committees that deal specifically with the military, but to me, that's a right answer. Congress should be doing certain things. Congress should have that if if I if I'm an officer and I'm investigated for sexual assault, sexual harassment, uh, harassment, uh, any other type of officer misconduct, whether I'm found guilty or not guilty, or you know, or even if the investigation says, yeah, this is substantiated, this is not substantiated, there should be should be some type of way for Congress to see that because when Congress screens people for a promotion and for command, if there's some doubt anywhere, they should know about it. And here's the problem with that. What happens if someone is committing, and I'll just pull this one up, uh, sexual harassment? And it's at this command, but the commander's like, yeah, this is not substantiated, so I'm not going to follow up on it. And it goes away. And now this, this individual goes to a new command. And again, a sexual harassment of, of, uh, allegation comes up. Well, that new commander doesn't know that this has happened before because it was uns unsubstantiated and it goes away. So why don't they should know there should be some way for them to know hey this is the same things the same patterns are coming up and up and up and that's something that you know in the military the family advocacy program does that exact same thing but that's that's about family disputes that's about domestic violence that's about you know uh child neglect those type of things but it doesn't happen for sexual assault it doesn't happen for military sexual trauma and i will tell you I, I, I will absolutely raise my hand and go in front of a judge and say this, if or Congress. I have seen military members with multiple, multiple allegations of sexual misconduct in the same command and not be held accountable. Every time it's, well, that's unsubstantiated. And then another, another one, well, that's unsubstantiated. And the leaders just look the other way. You know, you know, I always ask at what point does it no longer become a coincidence? Is it two incidents? Is it three? When is it? And that's the problem with the military and all these commanders. Well, I don't want to be held liable. Guess what? When you're a commander, you are given special trust and confidence of Congress. You are given the ability to do almost everything. A commander can re-enlist a military member and it not go up to headquarters for approval. Like the commander can do that. They can promote without it going, like they can do it on site and say, you know what? I like this, what this Marine or this soldier is doing, promote them right now. They're given that ability by Congress. That means that individual is gonna get more money, uh, more benefits for their position because they were acknowledged. So this is the type of power commanders have. Commanders can just set aside um, a conviction at trial. They can. I've seen it happen. Uh, you know, good, bad, and different. I can see. I've seen where there's been a trial with a conviction and they've set it aside, uh, or I'm sorry, with a with a acquittal. And I've seen a general just set it aside and say, yeah. I, I think the jury made a mistake. They have this type of power. But the problem is Congress doesn't know about all the things that are happening. And when you when we're seeing these problems again and again, and you know, the the biggest example is Fort Hood. Fort Hood is a mess. And it's a mess because there are lawyers talking to the commanders saying, well, you can't do anything about this because then you could be held liable. Officers in the military are told to do the right thing. And we should always, as officers, be doing the right thing. 
if you talk to anyone who's been uh, in most, especially here recently, most of them will say, yeah, I saw officers and staff, senior enlisted do incorrect things and not be held accountable. We've seen that many times here. So that is the problem that the military is having right now. They do not have moral authority. It, like they do not at all. Uh, all you have to do is pick up any of the uh, any of the periodicals that talk about the military, like the military time, military news, those type of things where it's not run by the military itself, uh, because there are those publications that the military runs. Any of the ones that the military doesn't run, it's just going to be page after page of misconduct uh, every week. And I mean, it's I'm seeing it getting worse, not getting it, not getting better. One of my old units, the this the commanding officer ordered his Marines that they couldn't go get treatment at mental health because it was highlighting too many problems. We're in the military. We're supposed to find problem solvers not people who have a problem with problems being identified. And that's what you're seeing out of the, the officer corps. And it's very sad. It's a trickle down. It's You talk about that slippery slope. We are not just on that slippery slope. We are on it and headed downward. So th that's what I'm talking about today. Um, I also, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my coffee talk that I did yesterday about, um, you know, what we're seeing Yesterday, I was talking about how there are people in the military who don't want to take the vaccine. They don't want to take the vaccine. And what's happening is they're being processed out for failure to uh, follow a uh, direct order. I believe the 2nd of November is when the order goes absolutely into effect. A lot of people are refusing the vaccine now. What's going to happen to these people is if they're not a problem service member, if, meaning that they, they do their job, they're good, everything about them is exemplary. Um, but they just don't want to take the vaccine, they're going to get what the military is threatening them with is administrative separation. With administra administrative separation, uh, you have not gone to court martial. So uh, what you do is you go in front of a panel of other you know, military members. They talk about your record. You, have, you still have a lawyer. You still have the ability to call witnesses. I, you know, I've, I've done several of these things. And uh, then the panel makes a decision. Uh, they are very limited as to what type of discharge they can give. Uh, I believe they can do a bad conduct discharge, but for just one thing, they're not going to get a bad conduct discharge. Most likely what they're going to get is either a general. If, if all their other service is honorable, they're going to get a general or general under honorable, uh, honorable conditions or general uh, under conditions other than honorable. Now, here's the thing why, if, if they've been a, a good service member and haven't done anything else wrong, they shouldn't really fear getting a general discharge. And here's why. They get a general discharge, they are going to be able to appeal that to the VA. And the VA, if you take the steps to appeal, it, it, VSOs will tell you this, they're immediately, without fighting it, they're just going to bump it up one. If you're a general, um, if you're a general under honorable conditions, they're going to bump you up to an honorable discharge. So you're going to get all your benefits. As a general discharge, you still get your education benefits. You can still get VA disability, all the big things. Um, it's just some very specific things that you lose access on with the general. Now, if you're general OTH, or other than honorable, uh, you're going to get bumped up to a general discharge. But the thing is, you're still going to be able to keep appealing that discharge through the VA, and there are VA processes to do that. And I don't see refusing <clears throat> refusing a non-FDA approved. And I, here's what I mean: they're giving the uh, they're giving the vaccines to the military, the ones that are approved through emergency authorized use. Uh, I don't see forcing someone to get a non-FDA approved drug as really sticking. I Very early in my career, there was the uh, anthrax vaccine that they ordered people to get. People didn't want to get it. And, you know, really what they just did was just process them out. I don't even think they, they might've done administrative separation, but they also, there's other things they can do, but they're like, okay, well, if you're not going to take this, just go. Um, 
if if the military goes to make it more severe, that's going to be another one of these problems at the military. Because again, well, you let these other people not take the anthrax and they just got processed out. But now there's this other group that has a non-FDA approved vaccine and you're going to hold them to a different standard. I, I just don't see that happening and I don't see it being successful. Um, but those are the type of things that are happening. I, so um, if you have a military member who is refusing to take the vaccine, I don't think they're going to end up in a very bad position at the end of the day. Um, and whatever they do, they can appeal through the VA. Now, the VA is very jacked up. It'll take time. But ultimately, I think they're going to be OK. Uh, just don't give up. That's uh, if there's one thing I've talked to everyone about here on the show. When you're dealing with the VA, never, ever, ever give up. Um, because yeah, the VA will eventually just back down. They, they're bureaucrats. That's what they do. Um, so those were the big topics that I wanted to talk about today. Um, I have some other stuff planned. I just, because of this, I went into this, uh, I'm hoping to bring on some, some people who are veterans who are doing some, uh, really interesting things out there when it comes to your rights. Um, so I'm talking to some people trying to get some things to happen, but as always, Come over into our Facebook group, Veteran Nation on Facebook. Uh, join the group. Answer the questions. I want to make sure you know the rules, and I, I want to hear from you. But if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna, you know, answer the questions. I mean, the the questions are like, do you agree to be polite and not, you know, uh, you know, not name call things like that? I'm happy to have you in um, and a part of the discussion. But if you're if you're not doing that, I, I can't, I've got to do at least some moderation of it. Uh, so join the Facebook group, answer the questions, uh, join us on nrnplus.com. You can always uh, subscribe to us on YouTube now. We're going to have all these shows up there. And uh, yeah, thank you for joining us today. And for those of you out there, thank you for being worth serving.